Hello and welcome to a new episode of a new season of Highlights from the Hill, the original HCAM series that is designed to bring you inside the Hopkinton Public School Systems and highlight some of the really cool things that our staff and students are doing. I'm also super excited this year to be welcoming our new co-host, uh, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, who is our new superintendent of schools. So, Carol, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, this is actually very exciting to be here, um, to be entering into my first year as superintendent in the Hopkinton Public Schools. Uh, so I know we had talked a little bit about the nature of what today's show would be. And one of the things that I had been thinking about is that when kids approach our buildings in September, they come in and the floors are shiny and the books are ready and the teachers are there with smiles on their faces. But so much happens during the summertime and I think that people are kind of unaware of how much work actually does go on in our public schools during right. the summer. Uh, so I thought that uh, the people who would probably have best insight into this are people who are in our public schools all summer long. And so my guests today are Rita Balboa, who is an administrative si assistant in the middle school, and Consi Kanaja, who is an administrative assistant in what used to be center school and is now the Marathon Elementary School. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us just quickly how long you've each been in those positions in the public schools? Um, I'm, I'm in my 18th year, right, it, starting in June, was, you know, the beginning of my 18th year. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Same here, 18th year. Wow. Well, you guys started at the same time? I, cool I guess so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess uh, my first question for you is to just talk about how busy you are in the summertime. What happens? Well, I, in the summertime, I feel like I'm a traffic cop. Basically, there are deliveries, teachers come in asking for, you know, various things, um, scheduling goes on, parents come in and out, there's just so much going on um, just to get the school ready. So mine's a little different because um, we have the young kids in the preschool, kindergarten, first grade. That's the first time they're going to leave the child and trust with the school, so you want to make sure, you know, that they feel welcome and that assure them that the staff is, and we do have a fabulous staff, um, and that to ease all their concerns. That's the biggest thing. Everyone take a breath. And, um, you know, there's a lot of hand, you know, I call a lot of families to talk to them. Um, and also to make sure that the supplies come in. We have pallets. Um, <laughs> Carol came in one time with um, all four pallets came and I go, well, it's a mess right now, but I'm going to get through this. <laughs> yeah. So constantly unloading pallets and supplies and getting the teachers ready. Yeah, I think if you were in the Marathon Elementary School yesterday, as both Conti and I were, um, it would have been a little bit overwhelming. I mean, there are tables assembled everywhere with teacher supplies and workbooks and the things just keep coming and teachers keep taking them and then they go off into their rooms. but more arrives and more goes. I mean, it's just an amazing thing to watch how many supplies come into our buildings. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the teachers, because I think that you get a lot of teacher traffic during the summer, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe there's a belief that teachers have the entire summer off, but I think we could dispel that notion. Yes, definitely. Um, well, July, I think the teachers feel that, oh, it's summer, and I really don't want to go near the middle school. And that's OK. And it's OK with us, too, because we do tend to get a lot done in July. And then once August rolls in, the teachers start trickling in. And um, you know, and they're trying to get their rooms set up, and they're looking for their supplies. And um, you know, they want class lists, and you know, all this type of thing. And um, it, it gets really busy and, and it, gets, it gets hard in the office because there, it's just a constant stream of teachers in and out. But yes, they do work even in the summer, yes. Now is that typically like on their own, in their own rooms or mm -hmm. do different departments gather together and actually do any kind of uh, curriculum work or preparation? Um, there is curriculum work that goes on during the summer, mm -hmm. you know. Um, not, not all departments, but definitely there is there is that um, piece and um, so yeah I mean it's just the school is always busy it doesn't matter that it's summer I often get asked uh, people will say to me oh you're off for the summer because they assume that since there's no students then you know I also get the summer off 
but that's not true at all. And Alan and I are always hanging in there every summer. And <laughs> this summer, Anne was, was with us too. And um, it's fun. We have a great group. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a lot of, um, we have three new um, kindergarten teachers and they're so excited. And it's really cute. Like the dads will come in and they're rolling stuff in and they're all excited. And it was so nice to hear um, one dad say, I'm so proud of you, you know, to, to his daughter. Um, but they're all in there, and there are, is a lot of curriculum um, discussions going on. Mm -hmm. The math tutor, you know, they don't get paid for this, and they're coming in and working hard, setting up their new space, too, so all, everybody's got a brand new classroom. Right. So there's a lot of boxes being coming in, you know, personal stuff, yeah. them too, so, yeah. Yeah, and maybe just to clarify a little bit about curriculum in the district, um, in the general budget, we have... Uh, curriculum money for specifically earmarked for the summertime and what happens is teachers write proposals and then the proposals are either approved or denied by the assistant superintendent and this summer for the very first time in a long time all of that curriculum money for the summer is actually earmarked for projects so we have an enormous number of teachers this summer doing all kinds of curriculum projects across the district and that spans from K to 12 literacy math social studies science even things and sort of um, you know, those uh, soft skills areas. So we'll have guidance and special education, and it's just across the board. It's really lovely to see. Wow. Yeah. Does all that stuff happen in the school, or do they go out and do other, uh, get other kind of training, stuff like that? So the ones that are um, budgeted from the schools, that's pretty much just teachers kind of governing their own work. Sometimes they're doing the work inside the school, sometimes out of school. But there's also professional <laughs> development, as you say, mm -hmm. that happens all summer long as well. So people attending workshops and, um, you know, week-long conferences, AP institutes, all of that kind of thing happens all right. summer long. It's, it's really exciting. Um, the SMLs at the high school, they have three days of summer retreat where they are working exclusively on curriculum as well. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of that happens, and all of the administrators have three days of summer retreat as well. Yeah. We're busy. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's one thing I'm always interested in, because sometimes I, like, I wander in the schools in the summer um, doing something, and it's always like so much stuff in the hallways. <laughs> like, all, it's like all, the entire school is in the hallways. And does anybody ever get panicked? Like, Oh my gosh, it's like, you know, August 10th in a couple of weeks and everything is everywhere. <laughs> After 18 years, I know it always gets done. <laughs> yeah. and it, it, our custodians are fantastic. Mm. And um, thank God for the loudspeaker. I call them and I, you know, will request things and they're just great. Yeah. You know, they really are. But, um, but, you know, seeing all those boxes, that's a result of, you know, taking inventory, uh, talking to the teachers before June mm -hmm. to find out, you know, what we need and then ordering, you know, the whole purchase order process is, you know, very, um, it, it, you know, it takes, a t it takes time, but, you know, we need to have the stuff for the first day of school and, uh, right. you know, and so we do it. It's all behind the scenes, but mm -hmm. it gets done so that um, it takes a team. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, you, know, you know, and that's what you do, you know. We trust each other and help everyone helps out and that's how it all gets done yeah yeah and maybe along those lines of everyone kind of helping out and everything gets done maybe we should show a little bit of the behind the scenes video that yes we have. yes our main man Mike Trojan uh, went out to some of the schools and gathered some video so you can actually see what's happening in some of the schools over the summer let's take a look
All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse into some of our schools as much as Mike had fun going out and getting all that footage. So um, it is a busy time in the schools, as we can see. We like those crates, all that stuff in the hallway like we were talking about and everything going on. So I wanted to ask, you know, obviously there are some certain things that everybody knows about. And I think every single thing in every school gets moved so the floor can get washed and polished and then moved back, which in itself is a Herculean task. Um, what are some of the special things that have been going on this summer? Uh, and it, you know, like special projects or something? <clears throat> Excuse me. At the middle school this summer, we've been building a sound booth um, to sort of house the equipment mm -hmm. um, and, you know, which keeps it safer and um, it's just more organized and so yeah. we're really excited about that yeah that's been that's been coming for a while that's been yes that's been uh, in the in the works for a while and uh, it's actually today they're painting so I think they're all finished up nice and um, also the auditorium has gotten uh, a little bit of a facelift we have new lighting so we're really excited about that mm -hmm. and um, you know that's something that our drama department has been really wishing for for you know years and, yeah. and now finally we got it yeah yeah and was that and how did that get um, funded that actually was funded through uh, the monies that come in uh, from the productions that the kids put on the, mm -hmm. our fall play and also our spring musicals That's so awesome. yeah so over the years you know the the kitty has sort of built up and then when it got to the point where we could afford to do this mm -hmm. um, you know we, we went ahead and uh, I think that's really nice affirmation mm -hmm. of like the work that the kids are doing mm -hmm. too. They're actually yes. having, you know, the learning skills are having fun and they're making a difference. Yes, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the caliber of our drama program at the middle yeah. school level. You know, yeah. many districts don't have that. So mm -hmm. it's really exciting yeah. that ours is so prosperous that it yes. can even fund itself, so yes, to speak. Yes, it's, it's top notch. It right. really is. Yeah. Right. Well, a little different because we're in a brand new building. <laughs> that's your so special it's very project. Clean and <laughs> But we still have a lot of contractors going through, making sure everything's up and running. Mm -hmm. um, like I had electricians in the office yesterday. So, you know, you have to be flexible. You move out and let them get their job done. Yeah. Um, and all, like our phones have got to be all hooked up again and new mm -hmm. extensions. So everything's brand new. New mailboxes, new, everything has to be created. So yeah. It's a little challenge, but we're getting through it each day. How did the school get moved? Was each teacher responsible for their room or uh, did staff come in and move everything? So um, what they had to do was label boxes okay. like everybody got special numbers and um, mm -hmm. it was very organized um, and they had a crew that came in and unloaded um, the teachers shelvings and everything in their books mm -hmm. so um, they didn't have to do any of that nature but you know, all their personal belongings they needed to but what a team they came in um, Mrs. Sheelan who is now retired um, kind of over um, or all that the project so everyone else had to get out of the way mm -hmm. let the team come in and trust them and everything pretty much got it where it was supposed to go by the organization of the numbers yeah so everyone had a sticker and a number why don't you Very put it on the box that got there so <laughs> yeah. yeah and I think Mrs. Sheelan will be a person who was a little bit missed at this point oh, in the year because yes. she had you know such knowledge of mm -hmm. the workings of the building so, but we are excited to have a new assistant principal there as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Shannon yeah. Dickerson is our new assistant principal mm -hmm. at Marathon. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any other projects that are happening around the district? Well, I can talk about some of the major construction projects. Okay. So, as you know, we have the turf field going in. Um, they are working out there, you know, all day long, every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, despite even you know those rainy kind of days that we've had in the summer, and the target date I believe is September 20th. So that should be pretty much wrapped up very soon. Um, I know that that's very exciting for the high school athletes. And, yes. You know, especially when the spring rolls around and there's rain every day. You know, it used to be that they wouldn't be able to have games or contests. Um, and it would be difficult to practice in those places. They'd be practicing in whatever available gym space we had. But um, now with, with the turf field and the draining, uh, it should allow them to be outdoors more frequently. So mm -hmm. that's an exciting change for us. Um, and then it will also get you know, some of our high school athletes back on, on fields, and that will free up fields over at the middle school in Hopkins, too. So right. um, everyone will be getting their fields back, I guess <laughs> is what I'm saying. 
and we've also had an enormous amount of work done on Hayden Row. And that hasn't necessarily been a school project, it's a town project, it's part of the traffic calming initiative. Uh, but we've had one lane out there, so in the event that we have something at the schools, like for example this morning we had Chromebook pickups or ninth grade orientation, uh, it, it has been posing a challenge. But what we have learned is that it will be all cleaned up for opening day. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that is a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk a little bit about, um, like, this? I'm interested in the scheduling, because how many students are coming in this year? So we are about 150 students more than we were last year. Okay. I believe that the projection was originally 50. We are over 150. Wow. So we are at about 3,600 kids right now, just a little bit more. 3,600. Yes. And what I like to say all the time is we will have 3,000 students being dropped off in a quarter mile stretch of Hayden Row, <laughs> along with about 500 faculty members. So, mm -hmm. so please be understanding. Right. Please be understanding right. is what we're asking. Wow. Right. So yeah. that's just got to be a huge thing for, you know, every grade to mm -hmm. be dropped into classes, to be assigned, whether they get Chromebooks or whether they get something else. We saw in that video. Um, Mike Wolf opening up palace of just stuff, you know. Um, so, like, wh who does that? Who's the person that takes all those names and assigns if they get emails or assigns mm -hmm. if they get, you know, uh, technology or other resources? How does that work well, out? It's a process. Um, mm -hmm. InfoSnap, which is um, an online registration, and it's simplified our work. For registration right so all families go online to register and so we go in and check the proof of residency birth certificate records and once everything's all set up we're able to um, authorize um, the process to move on to the next step mm -hmm. so um, pretty much central office has helped us out quite a bit this year because it's a very big job um, so they're taking care of a lot of um, the registration for us and then um, once we get the authorization that they've been approved, then we trickle them in and find homerooms, busing, teacher assignments, you know, um, and make sure they're scheduled so they can get other things as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. It is. Yeah. And when we were leaving school in June, we assumed that we would have 11 kindergarten classrooms. Yes. Because we had about 202 kindergarten students registered at that point. We are at about 260 now, mm -hmm. so we we're up to 13 classrooms in the kindergarten. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. had uh, a huge influx into the middle school, too, this summer. Um, we actually thought we were going to have very small classes going forward this year. And uh, we now have 45 new students that have come in this summer. And um, so, as Consi said, it's a central office does the, the main registration mm -hmm. of the families. And then they deliver the uh, students to us. And then, and then we have to go from there. We have to register them. We have to do all that, that sort of administrative stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the guidance counselors then have to do their job, which is to find, at least at the middle school level, um, because it's not like high school or elementary mm -hmm. school, where at the high school, if you don't take one elective, you know, you can choose another elective. At the middle school, everyone takes the same electives. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more limited. Um, and so then it becomes, and it's been a daunting task this year for the, for the guidance counselors um, to figure out, you know, where to put these kids and class sizes and all this kind of stuff. But um, they're managing, and uh, Ann Ben Benick, the assistant principal, has been working closely with them. And, We'll be all set for yeah. the first day of school. Yes, and from what I understand, due to the increased enrollment, you've run multiple schedules. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. we have. Creating oh. a schedule, I don't necessarily know. Oh my God, people it's, understand it's how, daunting. How hard that yes. job is. Yeah, right? it's an enormous task, and yeah. when you do it once and then you must do it again, <laughs> it, it's an awful lot yes. of work. Yeah, yeah. 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 And not to mention that they've been hiring at the middle school too. Well, this is it. So then we have the the whole hiring process, mm -hmm. which is just another another animal, you know. And um, so we we thought we actually didn't need teachers, and now we have found that we need them back, you know, and maybe different, you know, different disciplines. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, we do need teachers again. Right. Yeah. 
I think what's interesting is when, when you know, we take a look at a classroom and we say, okay, there's another 22 children, for example, so we need to have a teacher. Um, because of things like electives and specials and L students, and it really turns out that when you have like 20 to 22 students coming in, you need 1.2 teachers. Okay. Right? So that's an interesting thing for, mm -hmm. I think, people to think about budgetarily. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so a question has arisen in my mind. Okay. So um, there's a brand new school that's coming online this year with another school being retired. There's a brand new traffic pattern that's pretty serious around the high school. There's 150 students that weren't anticipated, and this is your first year as a superintendent. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> We're all holding up. If it weren't for people like Rita and Concy, we, would we wouldn't be holding up, but Thank we are. You. And I think when Concy before said that it kind of takes a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. you know, all hands on deck. I yeah. think that that's what we've had this summer. Yeah. Uh, my administrative assistant is Georgette Wagar, and I say all the time, you know, I, I couldn't do it without her. Mm -hmm. The work that she has done this summer is amazing. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's the thing that I find so so awesome about this school system is that everybody, no matter what you're doing, has the same vision and it is to empower the teachers in the classroom for the students. And when I talk to everybody, like you, like IT, you know, it, they're all in, as invested in the students as the teachers are. And it's just, it's, it really is an amazing um, atmosphere to be working in. And I really think that is a key to what makes this school system such a shining example. Yes. So this summer, I'll just briefly tell you, um, there is a group called NETOP. They are the New England Teachers of uh, Psych. And this whole group began because uh, Mike Hamilton and Mike Sullivan in the high school have put this group together. And um, so we have the, host the meetings in Hopkinton, and people come from all over New England, and we had a guest speaker who had come from New Jersey this year. And we sort of give them a little stipend, like $150. It just covers their travel. Mm -hmm. um, and if they need overnight lodging or whatever. So it, it's a very small stipend, but it comes out of, not out of our operating budget, but rather out of money that NETOP has put together over the years. Okay. And we had a person who had come to present from New Jersey who said that it was such a remarkable experience that he wanted to give his $150 stipend back and make sure that it went oh. to a graduating senior. Wow. wow. That's so nice. that, that was a beautiful story. Yeah. 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 So it was a warm spot in my week, really. Yeah. And yeah. I think I mention it because it speaks to that sort of student centricity, right? That we we are a very student-centered yeah. district. Everything we do is about the kids. It's yeah. all about the students. Yeah, this has been really interesting. And, um, you know, I thank you guys for the work that you do. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank and you. And let me tell you, when they leave, they're not going out into their cars and going to lunch. They're going right back no. to the, <laughs> where the work is almost insurmountable right Doesn't now. Doesn't stop. I know. I know. Is it a frenzied pace this last week? Yes. Is this, this is it. This is Yes. This is it. Yeah, these, these might be the most hectic days of all, right? Yes. Yeah. last three? Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yes. yes. Because on Monday morning when the teachers come in, they'll polish up their rooms a little bit, but for the most part, we'll be ready to go yeah. Friday afternoon. Yeah. Jump right, right in. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. And the energy is great. I mean, I think it's the energy that sort of propels all of us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Just keep going. Yeah, that's exciting. right. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was a beginning teacher, someone had said to me, every year you can reinvent yourself. And this is the time. We do it every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thanks. And thank you very much for uh, joining us on the show. Thank, thank you. you. And yeah. thank you, Rita and Concy. It's been lovely. And I want to say pleasure. thank you also to all of your colleagues who do the same jobs in the yes. other buildings. We yes. couldn't do it without them. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And I also would like to thank you for joining us for this episode of Highlights from the Hill. And please tune in next month for a brand new episode to see what's going on in your public school systems.